In previous videos, we've looked at two circuit theorems that involve simplifying circuits down to just two components. We've looked at Thevenin's theorem, which allows us to simplify a circuit down to a Thevenin equivalent circuit, like the one on the left here, which consists of a voltage source called the Thevenin voltage and one resistor in series, a Thevenin resistor. And the other theorem was Norton's theorem, which allows us to simplify down to a Norton equivalent circuit, which consists of one current source, the Norton current, in parallel with one resistor, the Norton resistor. In this video, we're going to talk about how we can convert from a Thevenin equivalent circuit to a Norton equivalent circuit, or vice versa. And doing this is very, very simple. And it means that if we have a Thevenin equivalent circuit, we can very easily just convert it to a Norton equivalent circuit. Or vice versa, if we have a Norton equivalent circuit, we can easily convert it to a Thevenin equivalent circuit. Before we do this, I want to think back to the three steps that we followed when calculating, first of all, the Thevenin equivalent circuit and also the three steps that we use to calculate the Norton equivalent circuit. And specifically, I want to think about step two of each, because some of you may have noticed that step two, when thinking about the Thevenin equivalent circuit and the Norton equivalent circuit, step two was actually the same. Step two involved calculating the open circuit impedance from terminal A to terminal B. And this step was the same, and the method was the same, whether we were dealing with Thevenin's theorem or with Norton's theorem. So the first thing to note when we're converting from one to the other is we can say that RTH, the Thevenin resistance, is equal to RN, the Norton resistance. The two quantities are actually calculated in the same way and they should be equal to one another. The second thing to think about when we're converting from uh, Norton equivalent circuits into Thevenin equivalent circuits or vice versa is Ohm's law. We know that V equals I times R and so we can apply that to these equivalent circuits here. We can say very simply that the Thevenin voltage V is equal to the Norton current IN times the Norton resistance RN. And so using these two rules we can actually very easily convert from a Norton circuit to a Thevenin circuit. If we were um, going the other way and converting from a Thevenin to a Norton, we would simply rearrange our Ohm's law here. We could say that IN is equal to the Thevenin voltage divided by the Thevenin resistance because the Thevenin and Norton resistances are the same. So we can very easily determine one equivalent circuit given that we know the other one. Let's put this into a simple example. Here's a simple circuit that I want to simplify into its Thevenin equivalent circuit. And then we'll use that Thevenin equivalent circuit and convert it to a Norton equivalent circuit. So first of all, remembering our three steps for Thevenin's theorem, the first step is to calculate the voltage across the terminals A and B. And so what we have here is a simple potential divider. If we're measuring the voltage across A and B, we're actually measuring the voltage across the 33 ohm resistor. And so we can express this by saying that the Thevenin voltage V, TH, is equal to our supply, 9, multiplied by a fraction. We're going to put 33 on the top because that's the resistor that we're measuring across. And then both resistors added together on the bottom, 12 plus 33 on the bottom. And that gives me a Thevenin voltage of 6.6 .6 volts. The second step, if you remember from our examples that we looked at, was to calculate the open circuit impedance from terminal A to terminal B. And so looking at this circuit here and starting at terminal A, we come immediately to a junction and we can go this way through the 12 ohm resistor or this way through the 33 ohm resistor and so because there's a split here in our route from a to b these two resistors we should express in parallel and so we can say that r t h the thevenin resistance is equal to 12 
in parallel with 33. And those double slashes there, just my shorthand for parallel resistors, but they work out as 8.8 .8 ohms. 8.8 ohms in parallel. And so finally, we have our equivalent circuit, which we can sketch very quickly. Uh, we can say that that consists of a constant voltage source and one resistor in series. And we've calculated those values, uh, in this case, to be 6.6 .6 volts uh, as, our, as our feminine voltage there, and 8.8 .8 ohms as our feminine resistance. Let's apply what we covered on the previous slide there to convert this into a Norton equivalent circuit. So first of all, we can say that the Norton resistance uh, is equal to the Thevenin resistance. So there's nothing really to work out there. Um, we can simply say that the two are the same. But to calculate the Norton current, we need to use Ohm's law. We can say IN the Norton current, is equal to the Thevenin voltage divided by the Thevenin resistance. And if I calculate that, VTH being 6.6 .6 divided by 8.8, .8, I get an answer of 0 0.75 amps. So if I wanted to, I could sketch my Norton equivalent circuit, which would look something like this. It would be... Um, the constant current source in parallel with one resistor and we can say that that is a constant current of 0 0.75 amps with a resistance that's equal to the resistance that I had for the Thevenin circuit 8.8 .8 ohms so the two are very easily interchangeable we can we can convert from one to the other the last thing I want to do is, is kind of prove that this is the case because what we can do very quickly is we can return to our original circuit and let's convert um, this circuit to a Norton equivalent circuit as we would have done originally anyway and prove that we get this 0 0.75 amps because if you remember Norton's theorem it asks us to close the circuit and imagine that we have uh, a closed circuit there, and the current that would flow from A to B would be our Norton current. And so, very quickly, we can calculate the Norton current uh, conventionally, as, as we should do in our, as we have done in our previous examples, by using uh, Ohm's law in this case, because we can see that in this instance, current is going to flow from the supply, it's going to flow through this 12 ohm resistor. And we reach this point here where the 33 ohm resistor has been bypassed. Current isn't going to flow through this resistor when it can just flow through a wire. So in fact we have this simple arrangement where current is going to flow from the 9 volt cell through this one resistor and it's going to flow through our wire to form our Norton current and it's going to go back around bypassing the 33 ohm resistor completely. And so our Norton current, as we should calculate it if we were doing it properly, would be 9 over 12 voltage divided by resistance. And the only resistance in this case is the 12 ohms. And that gives me uh, 9 over 12, 0 0.75 amps. So we've actually proved that the conversion works. And we can actually calculate Norton current conventionally as we've done in our examples or we can calculate the Thevenin circuit, the Thevenin equivalent circuit and simply convert it to a Norton equivalent circuit using the rules that we've mentioned on the previous slide there. So I hope that this example has been useful to show that we don't have to calculate the Norton equivalent circuit if we already know the Thevenin equivalent circuit or vice versa. We can simply convert from one to the other by using Ohm's law.